I have never been more excited to be as wrong as I was about the predictions that I made with the future content coming to the game. A lot of the stuff that I had heard from hearsay has been cleared up, especially now that we found the articles with the official word from the developers, and we're going to talk about that today. Now, let me tell you what I was wrong about first and foremost. It seems I got the religion and the kingdom system mixed up. And of course, the PvP, which apparently is supposed to be worldwide. But we're going to get into that here in just a second. So first off, shouts out to MMORPG.com, uh, WCCF Tech, and of course, PC Gamer. Okay, so these three publications had did a interview uh, with the developers and they talked about the future of the game and they talked about some features that were going to be coming to the game. And we're going to touch on each of these here today. So first and foremost, um, with MMORPG, they kind of did a short form. They talked about PAX Day envisioning the types of wars and struggles players will have over resources, land and more. Um, that they'll typically find in other EVE sandbox games. Now, as you guys know, or if you don't know, uh, some of the lead developers came from EVE Online, which, as you guys know, is one of the most in-depth MMO systems, period. Okay? Now, they mentioned that there are going to be plans for feudal systems with knights, baronies, and eventually full-fledged kingdoms and empires within Pax Day. This plays hand in hand, they said, with the proposed religion system, which will effectively allow players to use miracles within magic or the magic within Pax Day, um, create a religion like in medieval life, which will play an important role in a village and the factions that control each region, meaning region control once they start expanding this world. Churches can be built with altars allowing for fast travel between churches within the same region or excuse me within the same religion right so we'll be able to create our own functioning religion priests can anoint knights and also do area-based blessings that can help boost crop yields or spawn rates within a specified region this can also mean that we get competing religions just like in real life where players can effectively make and form their own religion or, or make their own form of religion more appealing than another and therefore attract more followers and players on the other side this type of system could also spark wars again mirroring real life and if a religion grows large enough you can even appoint a pope so let's get into where i was wrong initially i, I had thought that the pvp system with the knight system was going to come first okay now the reason i thought that is because in my mind it just makes sense but then after digging into these articles it doesn't necessarily make that much sense because what the hell is the point of being a knight if you have no code to believe in, right? No religion to fight for, right? Like wars are fought over beliefs and or money, uh, usually money. And understanding this, you need a belief system established in order to incorporate that system. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So when we get into the article by WCCF Tech, they touched a little bit more on the subject. They said that I believe Clan Wars were also mentioned somewhere in the presentation slides. Is that feature coming during the early access phase? They said they are indeed working on the expansion for the PvP system. And yes, this will launch during early access. The system is not tied directly to the clans. So clans are just, you know, your homies, right? They said the PvP organizations are independent of the clan memberships of the players. We're assuming that some clans might choose to go all in on PvP and have the PvP organization and the clan memberships match one to one, but this is up to the players, and we're sure that there'll be some interesting mixing of clans across different organizations. So, of course, WCCF asked them, so, well, how would this work? Will there be sieges and stuff? They said, well, they do want to pull off sieges eventually. But in the short term, the PvP will be skirmish base. We'll tell everyone once what they have a better idea. Now, they also asked, will there be some bigger PvP-enabled areas uh, than Lioness? Because Lioness, as we talked about in the stream, I think it's just really a beta area. Uh, but they said the entire world will eventually be PvP-enabled. Having said that, the players who do not want to PvP will not be forced to do so. And the plots you're building <coughs> are sacrosanct and protected by the Divine Peace. So no destruction will come to villages and players, uh, to the villages players are building currently. So 
that, you know, when I first read this um, and was digging into this yesterday and today, I was really looking, I was like, uh, okay, well, how do you incorporate a system like that then if we're PvPing and the buildings are undestroyable? Um, so I had to dig a little bit deeper into this. Now, they mentioned they listed churches and feudal system as upcoming PAX Day features. How do those systems work and what about altars and miracles? But they said that the altars will be enable new gameplay through grace, a new resource attainable from the altars used for miracles and churches that are built around the altars. Now, I think we've seen these altars in the game, but I could be wrong. Uh, grace will also allow anointing knights who are PvP flagged across the entire world, which forms the basis of the feudal system. We'll tell you more about this when we're getting a bit closer to shipping these features. Now, the crazy thing about this, this system is what they're basically saying is, okay, establish a belief system. What does your knighthood or your religion essentially believe in? And then from that religion and from the grace of the God or whatever that we've essentially created, then we're using that grace to then appoint knights. And this essentially is the formation or the beginning of a formation of a kingdom, which in turn allows us to appoint knights. And these knights are in eternal conflict, basically permanent PvP mode, because they are fighting to defend and spread essentially their belief system which is crazy all in itself now how i think and how i mentioned before is if you decide to just stay a clan per se then you don't necessarily have to participate in the pvp or war system which you still will technically be participating in even if you can't be attacked because um as we talk about in the next article the purpose was for them to allow opportunities for people to then maximize on their economy, uh, right? So war is expensive, as they talk about in the PC Gamer. Uh, they said war is good for business. They said the concept of everyone being valuable is clearest in the interplay between different types of roles and play styles. So you might not be interested in PvP, which in its current form is quite limited, but will soon grow to encompass siege warfare and kingdoms fighting each other. Right, but the developer notes that this doesn't mean you can't contribute or won't, or won't be affected by the wars raging around you. They said once the kingdoms go to war, that completely changes the demand in the economic system. All of a sudden, food and prices are rising, right, because you need the buffs. The demand for food is going through the roof. So if you're focused on farming and raising livestock or you're a baker, you're going to be even more essential and wealthier. Meanwhile, anyone skilled at crafting weapons and armor is going to find their services in much greater demand because there's a lot of transfer of value. So even if you're not necessarily involved in the PvP functions, the war that's raging around you both in the heartlands and everywhere else in the world will affect you personally. Okay, now concepts like knights, kingdoms, and baronies will come over time, starting with knights, which will serve as the basis for the feudal system. Players will be able to swear allegiance to a knight turning into soldiers ready to start causing a ruckus in PvP warfare. Eventually, knights will be able to band together and form baronies, which will allow them to build castles and fortifications outside of the PvE heartlands, which will become focal points for big PvP wars and sieges, which I'm assuming is also going to influence region control area and territory control which will allow for specific perks and advantages to certain resources they said that from these foundations will become new social structures and roles all separate from the clan system while their civilizations will have fortifications and even resource rich areas that they control they don't have borders or territory within the heartlands that's all still divided between players and clans and you don't need to join the kingdom that most of your clan belongs to. So it's not about the territory you control. It's about the people who've sworn felty to you. And they can just leave you reducing your influence. Right? So they said that the knights and barons have to be very socially active, says the developer, to maintain the structure because it all really comes uh, from the power of social hierarchies and expect a lot of politics and campaigning then as this goes for lower positions. Players beneath barons and knights can be appointed to positions of power, some of them petty, but with some of them with special abilities, so there will be a lot of competition, thefts, coups, and there will even be backstabbing. 
Um, so really just looking at the situation, the situation before we even get into the religion section of this, basically the, at the core of it, like I said, we're establishing a belief system. And from that belief system, you're, you're pulling soldiers to your cause. And with your cause, then you are then going to war in order to attain control and prowess and spread influence throughout the land. If you hold no influence, no power, of course, then you're plan is pretty much useless all right now the beautiful thing i think is cool about the system is that even though it's a clan style system your clan doesn't necessarily have to be part of your kingdom think of your clan initially as your family right and your family members make different choices and different paths so even though they're, though they're a member of your current clan they might decide to go be part of a different kingdom that doesn't change your relationship to your family but it does change the relationship dynamic, right? So that's what makes this so cool. Now, as we get into the religion, guys, they said, like the medieval realms inspiring it, Paxley society isn't sold by no solely ruled by divinity. Excuse me, by nobility. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting into religion too fast. Knights, barons, and monarchs share power with the clergy. So players will be able to follow a religion which itself is player run with chapels and churches and another hierarchical system. Players will create parishes, which function a bit like baronies, and the bigger they are, the more roles will become available. So you'll be able to become a bishop, a cardinal, or even a pope if your religion grows large enough. Joining a parish will confer benefits such as using churches to fast travel, which we talked about before. Uh, Pax Day's worlds are big. Yeah, you guys know the world is massive. If you guys haven't played, it's ridiculously massive, okay? Can't wait for mounts. <laughs> okay. And long journeys increase the likelihood of getting murdered by bears or bandits. Now, they did tease bandits in their early access video, uh, which we'll be talking about in a different video. Okay. But as well as access to the parish's miracles. Pax Day is a world whose magic is real, where ghosts exist and people can cast spells. But unlike a MMO such as World of Warcraft, where you can just roll a major warlock and just level up and get more spells. Pax Day isn't a linear journey. This stuff actually needs to be discovered, right? So everything itself, all the world, the magic, the religions, all of that is discovered by us, the players. And it's up to us to create, manage, and nurture this as we move forward. Now, understanding this, that means that religion might come at the same time as kingdoms or religion might actually be first, which I thought religion would be after the knights and kingdom system was formed. But it seems like religion is the focal point, And then from that religion, your true uh, kingdom is created, right? Because your kingdom will be established on a belief system. And then from that belief system, then you'll have a reason to, ra to uh, wage war. Now, from that, then your knights, your soldiers, your troops are then established. And then from those troops, your kingdom is formed, a.k.a. the barony, the parishes, which will then evolve into kingdoms, kingdoms eventually evolving into empires. So I want you guys to just let your minds go crazy with this because I apparently had all of this shit backwards. But this makes it this this is going to be wild. I'm curious to see what type of actions and functions they're going to be introducing that allows you to raise your belief or spread your influence or gain access to certain uh, perks or level up your religion uh, in a sense and how you get access to those features as a religion as you guys move forward. Now, we've already been behind the scenes working on the format or the basis of the religion uh, that we're going to be creating as a clan or a kingdom in Pax Day. And I think it's, it's really cool. We're not going to reveal that to you just yet, uh, but I'll be excited to share that with you guys in the future. But with that being said, guys, I really wanted to take some time, A, first, apologize, but I've never been so grateful that I was wrong because we were missing a key piece in the puzzle and understanding the development process as to how things are going to be releasing over time. Uh, but I'm super duper excited for the way that this game is going to evolve. But with that being said, guys, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, or if you guys are just as excited about this as me, let me know that in the comment box below and I'll be happy to talk about that with you. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.